Your Excellencies, dear professors, members of faculty, members of the administration, dear com colleagues, dear friends, family members of our colleagues, and most of all, most of all, dear DLG. <laughs> Before I start, uh, a little caveat while drafting this speech, we're unaware that the DLG is actually going to sit next to us. Um, technically, I will not be able to turn around all the time, so if I address all of you as Dear DLG, please do not be confused. <laughs> when preparing for this day, I wondered for a very long time what I should talk about. I could talk about how brilliant 45th DLG is, how ambitious and determined they are, and not to forget how good looking they are, but that wouldn't be very interesting because, I mean, everybody already knows that. So what I did is I decided to go down a more personal route, more sentimental route. I would like to talk about this bond that has been created between us. That is one thing that is always so hard to explain to non-DLGs. I will still try to do so. <laughs> In doing this, I would like to go back 10 months to the time when we met for the first time. And I believe, in my opinion, it has been these first weeks of the A-Life together where this bond has been created, where the diploma Lea Gang truly became the diploma Lea Gang. <laughs> Our first contact ever was at the entrance examination at the DA. And no offense, dear DLG, but when I first met you, I was absolutely terrified of you. <laughs> at that point, technically, we were rivals fighting each other for the scarce spots in the DLG. And you made no secret of that. When I entered the room, I was greeted by stares that seemed to say, are, are you going to be a worthy competitor? Are, are you going to be a problem? <laughs> Immediately, it became clear to me that if I were to survive in this hostile environment, I would have to find allies. So in the break between the exams, I started to create bilateral relations with some of the students who had the same interest as me, which was surviving this very day. Having afterwards indeed survived this examination, indeed passed this examination, uh, my only concern now was how to work with these very competitive and fierce people, how to establish some kind of constructive relationship between them. I tried to prepare for the worst, but nothing could have prepared me for what was then to come. Thanks to our friends at the DA Student Initiative, the first weeks of the academic year were filled with social interactions and social events you could really get to know each other. And there was one night in the Four Bells pub one legendary night where we could get our first sniff of each other, so to say, uh, as DLG. And to go into more detail would take too much time, more time than we have right now, but let's just say the reactions to each other differed. One colleague, I'm not gonna say any names at this point, is, uh, t said something to me that really sums up my personal opinion of the DLG back then. You're cool. You're kind of crazy, but you're cool. I also overheard another colleague who mumbled to himself, Jesus Christ, I have, what the hell have I got myself into here? So you see, it was quite different. Personally, I immediately felt a certain fascination with these people, could, could not yet exactly say why. Then at another social event, I was sitting at a table having my second, maybe my third glass of beer, and then suddenly it struck me. To quote one of my favorite authors, Milan Kundera, I looked at these 18 people, and no one of them, not one of them, reminded me of anyone I had ever met before. I looked around and saw distinct and unique personalities, all of them very unique in the way they were, and none of them rem reminiscent of anything I'd ever seen before. I then embarked on a very bizarre mission to, to at least try to find one of these persons who could be boring, predictable, just average, and I failed miserably in doing so. Dear DLG, having lived back then 24 packed life years, Having met people from all over the world, I arrogantly doubted that I could ever meet more than one or two persons in my life who could show me more colors of the human spectrum. But having met 17 such people at the same time is a gift for which I am truly and honestly grateful. The following weeks after this, classes started, and as expected, of course, you were fierce academics. But maybe even fiercer were we in crafting this bond between us Everyone did their part. Social events were organized, some organized parties, or cinema visits, or theater visits, or board game nights. Together, we laughed, we danced, we made music, we had marvelous conversations, and sometimes we might have had a drink or two. I dis and the sheer amount of time we spent together in the beginning was, actually was hard to understand for non-DLG people. Whenever I tried to explain how much I enjoyed spending so much time with this DLG family, and how we grew so close in such a short time, the other people would just call it creepy and weird. And honestly, in hindsight, it was kind of creepy and weird. 
and crazy, but cool. I distinctly remember one, I remember one party where I had a great conversation with Jana over here. And we talked about this, exploring these questions. How can it be that we grew so close in such a short time? How can it be that such a pack of strays, so many distinct and strong personalities could form such a close unity without clashing all the time? And we agreed upon one thing. It was not despite, but because of our vast differences that we were able to complement each other and form this chaotic but very robust mosaic that is known as the 54th DLG. I kept thinking about this question that Philip just referred to, why so many strong personalities do form such a close, com close community. And in fact, the answer can be found in social sciences. It was found that in small and close communities, members of the respective community adjust to their peers. This leads to the result that social phenomena happen faster and are experienced more intensively. Friendships evolve faster. Trust is built earlier. Happiness, anxiety, love, sorrow, and all emotions in general about past exams, failed exams, job interviews, and so on, are shared more willingly. Members of such close communities allegedly begin to share their very own language after a while. And those who are not members of this group sometimes have difficulties to understand the dynamics within that group. I think most of this is true for the diploma program. Not long into the academic year, we had built up a reputation of spending a lot of time together, maybe a little bit too much, and of being very close, maybe a little bit too close at some points, but I guess that depends on the perspective, really. I am convinced our professors and our fellow students will not forget the 54th DLG. The bilateral relations between DLG and other courses were quite active and productive. DLG had delegations everywhere. <coughs> Student debates, polemics, wine tastings, le cercle. Every single party at the DA, we were there. The 54th DLG will also be remembered because we always stated our opinion quite clearly and frankly, even if we weren't even asked for it. And because we know how to celebrate and we were never really tired of demonstrating that skill because we are a group of, ambi of ambitious people who, in a very competitive, competitive environment, stayed supportive. Notes were shared, study groups were formed, wisdom was spread. We have our experts in every field who helped out when the precious knowledge was needed. All of us here strive for a career in the field of international relations, a broad field, and finding the right niche a place where one's individual talents can be applied most effectively is difficult. Those of you who follow the news and seeing that we are at the graduation ceremony of the Diplomatic Academy, I hope that most of you do follow the news, know that our times are shaped by crisis. International headlines show us that there is a lot of work for us to do. And with us, I mean all of my generation. The Diplomatic Academy equipped us with necessary skills to understand the problems of our time. But even more, here at the Academy, we learned how to work together with people from different backgrounds, accept different point of views, and we learned how to cooperate in the most effective way. When I look at all the graduate students here today, I see people who are prepared and eager to contribute positively to the world they live in. Still, there is doubt. For our generation, heading into the future means heading into the unknown. International politics create headlines which do give reasons to be worried. Future plans were one of the most discussed topics throughout the last year. Uncertainty and maybe even fear are going to be players in our life, but it is up to us to which extent. Because we must never forget it's great to plan the future. But really, nothing ever happens in the future, because whatever happens, happens now. And now, we all can be very grateful about how blessed we have been 
the last year or the last years and for what we have achieved. Studying international relations teaches us that elsewhere in the world, people our age experience war, poverty, and grow up without perspectives. We are lucky. Let us not forget this. Dear DLG 54th, my dear friends, when I think of you, I think of people who dream big, but who understood that it is not necessarily about creating headlines in international newspapers. It is other things too that make a difference. It is being here for the people who are close to you, no matter what. It is opening up and listening. These things have an impact. It is always good to have a desti destination in mind, a goal to be pursued, a dream to be dreamed. But even more important are the people we meet on the way. I feel like now that we come full circle, we walked a very important part of our ways together. I loved planning our future together. But more than that, I am happy that I can celebrate the here and now with you today. Congratulations to all of you, and thank you for everything. <laughs>